Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is Alex here. How are we all doing? Um, can you let me know if you can hear me okay, first of all? Um, just pop a comment in the box below if you can hear me. If not, I'm going to switch to a different mic. You can hear me loud and clear. Brilliant. Okay, it's first, used, first time I've used this new um, headset. Looks a bit like a Cyberman, I think. Just been watching... Um, Doctor Who reruns with my 11-year-old uh, daughter. <laughs> kind of reminds me of that, really. Square, square, round head. Cool. Okay, so you can hear me and see me loud and clear. Awesome. Just jumped on early to see um, who's here already. Um, you can see we've got Kelly. You can hear me. Uh, Leaf, Anthony Day you can hear me as well. Chris, um, Tim as well. Uh, let me know where you're from, everybody. I can see Tim said he's sitting on his balcony just four miles from the Greenwich Meridian and 200 miles from the equator, the closest town to the center of the world in Tima, Ghana, West Africa. Awesome. His hometown is Sirencester in the Cotswolds, but started uh, a small business in the exhibition and conference sector here in 1995. What an awesome intro. Welcome, Tim. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I think we're going to struggle to beat that today. I'm broadcasting live from Pool in Dorset, which was pretty windy and rainy. Um, started the day off with a swim in the sea. Can you believe it? It wasn't warm. It was massive waves, and it was the 12th day that me and two friends of mine have done this um but it's pretty uh pretty invigorating i have to say i love it i'm kind of addicted to it now in a, in a weird kind of way um so that's that's my intro uh tim i think you're still winning uh chris says hello everybody's chris from elfie drinks grown up drinks from the countryside now natural and alcohol free never made a podcast interested to hear ideas about how i can use this tool to increase awareness and engagement with my young brand nice summer breeze in surrey hills today but a gray day yeah it's just brightening up here as i'm speaking to you now um which is helpful as i'm planning on going for a run later uh, i've done my time in the rain already today sophie uh, can hear me live in the west midlands uh anthony's in york leith cloudy and gray london kelly in birmingham shirley kent um alan says hi alex anthony's been podcasting for a while needs more listeners um absolutely everybody probably bar somebody i'm going to talk about um with my first slide could do with more listeners i'm sure uh alan's in romsey not a million miles away from me in pool thank you for joining us as well uh anthony so alan so um just want to point you in the direction uh, everybody of the polls i've just posted up which you can see a couple of you have jumped in already so first of all wanted to quantify what are you most looking to leverage podcasting for everybody's got a reason um everybody's trying to figure out this new well for you it might be new technology it's been around since 2004 actually podcasting and it's had its uh peaks and troughs along the way and now is clearly uh, a bit of a peak more and more people have heard about podcasting over the last couple of years um, it's doubled in the last five years um, I'll give you some more interesting stats to show you uh, literally I want to show you today uh, exactly why I think now is the best time so head on over to the polls let me know um, what you're most looking to leverage podcasting for is it to become a thought leader in your space whatever that might be is it to sell more of your products and services, uh, i.e. part of your marketing? Um, is it to attract a brand new audience? Is it to attract a brand new audience? Um, and anything else, any other reasons? And I'm sure there are other reasons as well. But if you fit into one of those three, great. If not, put other. Um, and let me know, uh, what would you class yourself? Uh, entrepreneur, business owner, marketeer? um other i've got lots of votes for other um i should have put some other options down if you're another yeah just pop it down in the in the link below here guys um the more um interaction engagement we get on here the more i can tailor this content to you so i know exactly um exactly who you are you know are you uh, more in the marketing space are you more uh, entrepreneur business owner um are you an employee of another company 
and you're looking to start a podcast as a side project, be that for a business idea you've got, is it a hobby and you, you simply want to um, articulate your, your passion for, for what you love to, to a different audience? Uh, Sophie, all of the above. Um, yeah, and, and, and it often is, to be honest with you. Um, part of your content marketing strategy, just launched your own business doing copywriting and social media. Awesome. Uh, well done. Well done for taking uh, that step. Um, something I know all about myself. Uh, MD says, hey, everyone, we've tried to launch our own podcast and have some serious tech issues, and this is limiting our ability to share our brand. Wow, that's interesting. I haven't had anyone post up anything like that um, before. Um, a good place to start. I would um, recommend you all, if you go to the beginning of the chat here, I've just punched in some links there, and again, I'll share them right at the end of this uh, with you as well. Um, but I've started a Facebook group literally as something extra to do uh, to, to help other people. At the start of the lockdown, when it happened and we all found, um, just going to grab my coffee in a Christmas mug. Don't ask me why, just like the mug. Um, so we started a Facebook group called Podpreneur. And it's gone from like zero to 700 people in literally five, six, seven, eight weeks maybe now. Um, but we've had over 20 people launch podcasts from, from nothing, literally just giving them the nudge, the accountability maybe as well um, to, to launch their own show. And it's great because people now within the group, other podcasters or other podpreneurs, as I say, are helping um, – other podpreneurs in the group. So I, I noticed a couple of people have te had had technical issues and people are giving advice. Um, and I'm not a techie, which is one of the reasons I'm, I'm talking to you today, show you that anybody uh, can launch a podcast with, with zero tech skills, zero knowledge, um, you really, and, and zero money as well. And that's what we've been doing in over in Podpreneur. But obviously, you know, if you are um, a brand and you want a more professional uh, looking, sounding podcast, etc., cetera, uh, then equally we can help people with that as well. So let's have a look. Alan says he's looking at using podcasting to expand our digital media offering to our clients. Absolutely. Great idea. Uh, Kelly, financial planner at Lucent Financial Planning and want to help more people reach financial freedom so a podcast would be a great way to position yourself uh there kelly um Sinal, i'm a university student wanted to make the most of the summer as placements have been cancelled and create a hobby out of podcasting with three friends from uni um awesome um Sinal, is that S Sinal who i know is that Sinal who i who i know uh, i'm sad to hear that placements have been cancelled and i can probably you know understand why businesses have done that um i mean for me it's, it's interesting at the moment um literally like many of you things went absolutely dead uh, every virtually everybody we were working with uh brands on podcasts and, and entrepreneurs uh literally pressed pause and everything but now the last three weeks i would say um people are being unfurloughed uh brands are getting budgets reassigned so i'm having more and more conversations with some really interesting um brands and also thought leaders um, in different genres as well. So, um, Anthony, a, a podcast to raise awareness of the climate crisis and possible solutions. Awesome. Um, uh, trying to remember. The Common Ground, one of my students, Chess Fernley, has just released a podcast called The Common Ground. Um, have a look at that, Anthony. I think you'll find that really interesting. Um, they've got uh, interviews with the likes of National Geographic scientists uh, covering all sort of range of different um, subjects, but I think that could be right up your street. Uh, Shirley Elizabeth, multiple business owner and need to step up marketing efforts. Alan joined the Facebook group. Awesome. Well done, Alan. Uh, Leith, a bit ambitious, but I want to create two podcasts, one business orientated for my current role and another is hobby related. Um, awesome. And I wouldn't want to stop you from doing two because I'm um, planning on launching a second one myself. Uh, my my podcast is twice a week now. But I would say don't launch two at the same time for, for obvious reasons and, and getting overwhelmed. Launch one, learn as you go, and then take those learnings when you when you do your, your second podcast, uh, Leith. Okay, guys. So uh, any questions that you get, you are using the chat function. 
that would be great. There's also an ask a question button, which I can see here. Um, if you don't want anyone else to see your question, then by all means, put them in the questions and answers tab. But ideally, post them in the chat box and everyone can see and interact. Um, and I guess, you know, people offer up advice as well. So, um, Mihaela says, I thought about using podcasts to create awareness for our business, consulting within financial services, and move away from webinars. As we can see, there's a bit of webinar fatigue in the last month. How would you go about it? Great question. Um, and I will answer that question, and then I'll dive into the content. Because, yeah, like you, and I think I hold, I reckon I hold a Guinness World Record or something like that in the number of webinars um, in a period of time, because I'm up to about 120. Yep in uh in the last eight weeks since since lockdown um and those have mainly been hosting uh with other speakers but uh, a number have been me doing a solo uh here um both myself and i also speak for, for other organizations like the um british american business which is the u.s chamber of commerce in the uk i do a regular event with them and we've moved that online as well so yeah 120 i reckon i'm at something crazy like that and we've definitely seen peaks and troughs with regards to how many people are watching webinars um, and hence we've changed our offering here at the festival of enterprise so i'm also the content director at the festival of enterprise um and put together the the lineups and we've definitely seen the content that people want to know about change as well you know kind of moving away from just wanting to know financial information such as you're in that genre to actually um finding out more solutions when it comes to uh you know growing their business coming out of covid19 etc uh you know you know marketing leveraging tech uh, all those kinds of things and i guess podcasting falls into both marketing and tech to be honest with you um so yeah 100 percent. i think you can use podcasts to create awareness for your business um to move away from webinars and also you get far bigger audience through podcasts because you i don't know how your business works but you can attract people from all over the world um and I'll, I'll show you with the slides now and hopefully i'll answer your question as i as i go mihaela um but i just wanted to bring that to everyone because i think a lot of people probably are getting a bit of webinar fatigue um and i'm going to continue doing these you know once a week for my own webinar and we're doing two a day here um because there's definitely an, ap an appetite for it um, but obviously more people are going back to work and having less time to access webinars during the day but we're seeing more and more people access them via um replays um and for example you know i'll give you here's a little bit of inspiration i just checked the figures today um a friend of mine started a podcast within our podpreneur facebook group uh, about a month ago now and uh, it's called not just crew and it's for cabin crew both past and present airline cabin crew and we started doing a live episode every week every monday and the last one we did, so this Facebook group's gone from zero to just under a thousand in four weeks now um, from airlines all across the board. And I'm a co-host on it with my friends, uh, Simon and Trevor. Uh, no, not the uh, infamous BBC children's TV presenters, but two completely different guys. And last week's episode has now been watched by 2,800 people um, in 60 hours. So how many is, is a webinar going to reach? Uh, the most we've had on here and our database is like 200,000 people. The most we've had is when I had my friend Piers Linney on, um, ex Dragon's Den Investor, right at the height of COVID-19 when people were trying to find out about the different loans and stuff. And we had over 1,100 people on that webinar, but the average has been uh, around between 100, 150, I think, something like that. And it's, you know, come peaks and troughs, like I say. Um, and yes, I know you can get webinars with, thousands of people on but for me podcasting can reach a far far bigger audience and I, I think for me it's a hybrid mix you want you want um you know live webinars uh podcasts you could do live like we did we did a live stream of this podcast into the facebook group we've got and then we put it out to the world um on audio as well so um bit of an echo you say on this i wonder if it's because i've got this new headset on Hopefully not. Let me know if anyone else can can hear an echo. Um, let me. Do you know what? I'm watching it on my phone as well. Oh, it sounds all good to you. Okay, no echo. Okay, so um, just your end, um, Leith. I'm afraid. Okay, guys. So who's ready 
Who's ready for a presentation on amplifying your brand with podcasting? Everybody ready to go or any last questions before, before I dive in? Um, I'm going to go for about 45 minutes and then answer any more questions. I'm going to hang around. Um, yeah, Chris, I, I did have my, my an, another window open on my phone, so I don't know if that was it. Um, oh, Leith did. Yeah, you had another window open. That's often the way. Podcast versus webinar. A podcast always audio only great question angela um actually and I, I can't remember the percentage off the top of my head but it's a significant percentage of people consume podcasts via youtube which is obviously um a video uh platform there's many ways you can you can consume podcasts um but strictly speaking um it is audio and it lives on spotify iTunes now, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, all of these different platforms um, and a gazillion and one different apps that you can listen to uh, via your phone. So if you're ready, guys, I am going to focus my screen um, on my presentation. There you go. Um, and just keep posting up. I'm going to let you know. Let's have a quick look at the poll before we start. So everybody who's live on here with me now, what are you most looking to leverage podcasting for? 45.5% um, want to, it's just changed, 41.7% want to attract a brand new audience. 23% uh, equally want to become a thought leader in their space and sell their products and services. And just 7.7% .7 other. Um, we've got, um, 33% of people are business owners, um, 16% marketeers, 8% entrepreneur and 41% other. So I clearly didn't guess what audience was, but, um, let me know what, what's other, what else, what else would you class yourself as if you're not a business owner, an entrepreneur, a marketeer? Um, do you work for somebody else? Uh, I'm trying to think, um, would you consider yourself like a vlogger, a blogger? I had a number of people on these webinars who were looking to uh, repurpose their content from um, from a vlog like a YouTube or a blog into a podcast. So lots of different things you can do. Um, and we've helped a number of people do that with existing um, vlogs, blogs, et cetera. So let me know. Yeah, just post up in the chat box. What else would you consider yourself to be interested to know what kind of audience we've got here today, guys? So let's kick things off so first of all um that's me alex chisnell podpreneur it's the name of my free facebook group it's the name of my uh website as well podpreneur.co.uk uh where you can find out more about uh me um so first up question who's this who could tell me who recognizes that face you probably all recognize the logo behind him which is Spotify, for those of you who don't recognize it. Clearly podcasting. Joe Rogan. Boom. Rogan. Says Alan. Rogan. Quick off the mark there. Well done. So um, why should we, why am I going to put that slide up there? Um, $100 million is the rumor. 100 million to have his podcast exclusively on Spotify. Who would like to monetize their podcast? I should have put that down as an option. I think I left that one off. Um, let me know in the chat who would like to monetize their podcast. If you've got an existing podcast, are you monetizing it? Interested to know. I think a couple of people put that they had podcast already. Um, would you like to make money from it? Absolutely, says Alan. Why not, says Sophie. Why not, says Daniela. Leaf would be great, but not sure how to do it. Tim, yes, would wish to monetize. Uh, Leaf, another presentation, but um, one of the things I covered in our Facebook group, actually, and it's a popular one, I'm going to do it again, is, is monetization. And I've identified 10 to 12 different ways that you can monetize a podcast. Um, so Anthony gets a small amount via Patreon. Cool. Um, and I know the guy who set up Patreon is a, is a multimillionaire for setting up that platform, um, which those of you don't know Patreon. So um, how best to describe Patreon? Uh, so basically, you can reward, you, you can offer your listeners the opportunity to contribute financially to you creating that podcast. Uh, so and you can also reward them and, and give them 
I've seen other people do this, like Rob Moore, the disruptive entrepreneur who, who I've had on my show would be like, you get a signed book if you contribute £10. For, for £25, you would get this. For £500, you can, you can interview me for your show. Um, he did. I think th things like that he's done. So, um, yeah, Patreon. Uh, sponsorship's the obvious one that most people know about. But, you know, um, yeah, 100 million to be exclusive. And I've seen like Russell Brand um, have his content on another platform uh, exclusively as well now because I was listening to Russell Brand's podcast and now you've got to pay to do it. So interested to know who would pay and who wouldn't. Um, depends how much of a fan you are, isn't it? How much, how valuable that content is to you. So how many downloads does Joe get? Well, allegedly it's around 190 million downloads. So he could kind of name his price. I think that I've read it's something like six or seven year deal, I think. Kind of handcuffs deal, I guess you'd call it these days for Joe Rogan. Um, pretty insane. So I just wanted to grab your attention with that because I'm sure everybody would be interested in that. So what I want you to take away um, in the next 40 odd minutes is that. I believe podcasting is here to stay. Um, it's not too late to start your own podcast now. Um, anyone with zero tech knowledge, as I said earlier, could start a podcast. Um, it's not expensive. People will want to listen to you. I guarantee it. And only approximately four hours a week, I believe, you need to do uh, a weekly show one episode uh, a week. Um, those of you who've got an existing podcast, Anthony, for example, how long do you spend on on your podcast? And how, how often do you um, put out content? Is it is it a weekly show? Uh, I'm just doing the, the minimum. You can obviously, you know, it's like anything in life. How long is a piece of string? Uh, how many hours are there in a day? You know, we all, we all only all got 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 30, 31 uh, days in a month and it's where you prioritize that time obviously um wow okay that is a considerable investment two and a half days uh for each weekly show wow that is that is investment but obviously you consider it to be uh, a good one um likewise you know i invest a lot of time in my own show um but i've now got a team um that does all of the other bits and pieces for me. Um, I focus on what I love, which is actually uh, recording the content with inspirational people that I like having on my show. Everything else um, I, I outsource from, from the booking, the guests, to uploading to the platform, to um, promoting uh, to my audience. So, um, okay, research. So for me, yeah, well, I'll show you how I do it. Um, and let's... Let's, so that's what I'm hoping you walk away from, guys. Um, any anything else you want to you want to take away from today? Post up um, in the box. Uh, let me know. Often get questions around, um, for example, length of podcasts, um, guests, uh, whether to be a series or a weekly show, um, best day and time to release. Uh, editing, B2B, B2C, can you do both? Um, all sorts of questions, building a brand, sponsorship, promoting apps, websites, books, um, guests, how do you get guests? All those are questions that I've had on previous webinars and, and all of those are questions that I answer on a weekly basis uh, within my Facebook group as well. So post, post them up, let me know, uh, and I'll see if I can fit them in at the end um who do you outsource to uh so i have my own team now alan so i have my own team built my own team up uh i could say business called podpreneur um but i started literally with my own podcast uh weekly show and um then decided to get serious about it a year ago uh and i'll just talk you through uh that so that's my show screw it just do it with alex chisnell uh, I'm not going to tell you a huge amount about me or what I do. You can find that out um, easily. There's not many Alex Chisnells um, if, if you Google me. But I just want to show you really, really briefly why I think um, that you, you should be listening to me and, and why you should um, you know, pay attention to, to the, the information I'm giving you when it comes to podcasting, uh, what I've learned um, 
over over the years, etc. So I've taken my own podcast to to number one ranking. Um, screw it, just do it. Number one ranked entrepreneurship podcast. We've got it to number one in in five different categories now: technology, podcasting, and we've also taken our clients to the top of the podcast charts as well. And that's not just in the UK. Um, I, I I honestly never set out to have a number one ranked podcast in Uganda, but that is one of the crazy things that has happened on this podcasting journey um, that I've been on and a number of other random countries that I never uh, set out to get a number one in either. Uh, my show now after three, we just celebrated three years last week, is now listened to in over 140 countries worldwide, including countries I never even heard of um, that existed. So it's been a geography lesson uh, for me as well. Um, here's a screenshot just to show you uh, just a random one from a country. Uh, you can see my podcast number 15 there. Screw it, just do it. Sandwich between um, Tim Ferriss at 17, Gary V audio experience at 13. Uh, again, if you'd have told me three years ago that my podcast would be in a completely different country like Egypt that I've never even visited uh, and be ranked next to two of the people that I actually follow and to the people I've been unable to get on my own show. I've got through to the first gatekeeper with their PAs, but never got them on my own show. Um, Stephen Bartlett, Diver's CEO at number five, who was my first guest on, on my show and now has done incredibly well with his own show. Um, but yeah, I never thought that would be possible, but it is. So if you want to you know, market to Egypt, sell products and services in Egypt, or just get your message out there. Um, it's all possible. Um, these are the kind of podcasts that I've collaborated with people or essentially created, me and my team. Um, so Festival of Enterprise, that's how I first came in touch with uh, this organization that you're watching um, on this platform today. So we created the podcast for the event. Um, X Forces, which is a military organization that helps um, people transition from the military to civilian life. That's when I got to meet my first Lord, Lord Young there. Um, and it's called Military in Business, um, American brand NPE coaching that we've helped uh, with their podcast. And then also do consulting now over what you know, I've learned over the last three years on how to get my own show and other people's shows to uh, top 20 ranking. Uh, Grenade couldn't get theirs, uh, theirs into the top 200. Um, went there and within uh, a week, we'd got them into uh, the top 20 in the UK. And Grenade are number one sports nutrition company in Europe, number one chocolate bar in the UK now as well. In fact, you might not know. So why now? Why now? Why do I think now is a good time to podcast? So I've put some, and this is me because I am not, uh, like I say, a techie. I've just knocked this up myself. So you probably can't see that amazingly well, but I just wanted to show you. Um, global listens are up 10% um, since the middle of March lockdown, when lockdown first instigated. And some interesting stats there. In the UK, it's up 20%. Italy, 22%. France, 31%. So a third more people are listening to podcasts in France than were pre-lockdown. And really interesting are the subjects that people are, are listening to more, what's trending. Kind of no surprises for me when you look at them, really. Science and medicine. Well, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, society and culture. It's changing, isn't it? It's changing by the day. If you look at you know the Black Lives Matter uh, movement as well. Kids and families, well, we've been homeschooling. I've got two girls, 11 and 13. Excuse me, one's back in school now. Uh, the other one's doesn't look like she's going back till September. Um, I'll keep my thoughts to myself on that one. Uh, TV and film, well, we're all watching more, uh, consuming more content. Um, and then because it's crap, isn't it, on TV at the moment, there's no new there's no new television programs, no new films that are being released. So people are consuming podcasts instead. And then comedy. We've all needed a laugh over the last eight weeks, haven't we? Um, so really interesting stats. And I'd love to get the, the latest stats. That takes you up to uh, the, the end of April there. I'd love to know what May's stats were, how that's changed as well. Um, 
so I'll just go back, leave that there. So any uh, any other questions there that we go? Here we go. Brilliant. I will go back and answer all of these guys. Um, who do you ask? So, yeah, Kate, do you need voice training first? I hate the sound of my own voice. Kate, uh, do you know what? 99% of people do. Uh, in my experience, uh, and you know, having 700 people on my 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 Facebook group already, um, I can guarantee you, I don't listen back to any of my own podcasts. I used to listen back to it once myself. Now I get um, one of my team to listen back and then mark when to start the podcast, where to end it, where to delete any bits in the middle, um, pull out any quotes, that kind of thing. But I, I don't like listening back to the sound of my own voice either. Um, and I think it's just you know one of those imposter syndrome. Uh, things that people have um, and my advice is just and, and this isn't meant rudely or anything but just get over it um, I, I had to get over that myself um, and and you know 99% of people don't like the sound of their own voice um, but you don't have to listen to the sound of your own voice once you put it out there into the ether um, you don't have to I don't like I say don't listen to it anymore um, I just record my content get it out there uh, the less Waiting around, hanging around, uh, the better for me. Uh, Tim, looking to target the organic and natural product supply chain. Absolutely. Uh, which equipment do you need? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll cover that. How do these stats work? As Warren Munson's podcast is also in the top 10. Um, is it in the South Coast water? <laughs> Alan, I know Warren uh, very well indeed um, from Inspire. Um yeah, and you know, podcasts go up. You know, like anything, whether it's music or film, podcasts go up and down in the charts. Or you know, during the time of day, uh, on a on a daily and a weekly and a monthly basis, um, the ones I kind of pay attention to is is the all time chart that you get, and it just sees how much you know how consistently are you in uh, in the charts, and and mine. Uh, it, it, you know, you, if you look on your Apple app, it literally just lists the top 50, I think. And I know if mine's still in there that I'm doing something right. A uh, bit of a techie question from MD, but which software do you use if you're recording remotely? Um, so for me, I've, 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 and I'll cover a lot of these, but um, but for that one, it's easy one for me to say. I'm, I'm not a huge lover of this platform we're on at the moment, for example, Crowdcast. Um, but I've been using Zoom for years. Um, before this, I uh, used Skype before that until I found Zoom was better uh, quality than Skype. And I've never had a problem with, with Zoom, uh, to be honest with you, recording remotely. And there's things you can do to improve the quality of that audio, which I talk about in, in my Podprinter group. And, and I've mentioned on other webinars before. It was with Warren that I first met you. Ha ha. There you go. Uh, and yeah, Warren's done very well with his podcast and con congrats to him as well. Um, I'm glad, glad he did that. Great move, I think, with regards to you know thought leadership, etc. Um, so yeah, I'm going to answer most of those questions. Um, yeah, Zoom, and you can use. I'll, I'll cover this in a minute, but there there are a couple of platforms out there that which would host your podcast, which can also record your interviews. You can actually you know make a call from the platform, and it records it automatically within the platform for you. Um, so I will cover that so um spotify so this is why i think now is a great opportunity guys um to start a podcast so spotify just spent 100 million on uh getting joe rogan's exclusive content last year they spent another 500 million plus on acquiring podcast companies um they also bought their own hosting platform called anchor um so this is the one I was just alliterating to, actually. So it, it's it's free at the moment. I don't know if they'll bring in a subscription model, knowing uh, Spotify. But you can literally do everything in there, and it's drag and drop. It's really easy. You can you know select your music, record an intro, make a call to record an interview with someone, and it all sits within that platform. They've just improved the analytics that you get from that platform as well so you get better stats on who's listening and, and where and they've said they're going to spend another half a billion another 500 million on podcasting so the fact that you know a tech giant like spotify is investing that much time and money into podcasting uh tells me you know that it's here to stay um Another sign for me would be that new cars are being made with a technology 
to listen directly to podcasts via that button there, listen on Apple Podcasts. They also, um, getting away from iTunes, are splitting their content into Apple Music, Apple TV, and Apple Podcasts. So iTunes will eventually disappear. Um, clearly, people, you know, Spotify made this play because they're having people listening to music on Spotify and then they were leaving their platform to go to Apple and iTunes to listen to podcasts. So they thought, well, you know, if we can keep people on our platform, we've got the opportunity to monetize that more. Let's go all in on podcasting. Let's have podcasts as well. And let's have exclusive podcasts that people can't get anywhere else. And then comes Google podcasts as well, guys. So Google now index audio. So back in the day, if you used to do a search on Google, you'd get somebody's you know list of websites come up, wouldn't you? Uh, then you started seeing video uh, as well coming up in searches. Well, now audio comes up in searches as well. So they've placed an emphasis on people people's podcasts being able to be found on Google as well when you're searching online. So, you know, I love the fact that there are three of the biggest tech giants in the world all competing uh, for attention when it comes to podcasting. Um, and, you know, who knows where we're going to go when we're going to go next on this. But it's an exciting time, um, I believe, to, to start uh, and to grow an existing podcast. So, um, let me give you some stats. So there's over 1 billion active YouTube users out there at the moment. Big number. Difficult, I think, to launch a vlog and get found um, and get subscribers unless you're going to put money behind it and drive traffic to it, unless maybe you already have a significant uh, engaged following, um, i.e. You're an, you're an influencer, you're a you know, sports, music, whatever it might be. Very difficult, I think. That's not to say that I don't think you should also have a YouTube channel. It's something that I'm looking to finally get into uh, myself this year as part of my strategy for Q3 this year. 20 million active blogs. And that has over a billion blogs out there. These are just the active ones. Um, it's interesting. I was chatting to somebody in the podcasting space uh, in New York, and she thinks we're in a similar journey to when blogs first came out. Uh, what do I mean by that? So she thinks it's a 10-year journey until somebody brings out the next thing, you know, vlog, blog, podcast, what's going to be the next thing? Um, and she thinks we're about year four or five. So she th still thinks we've got five or six years to go. And obviously that's going to change depending on how quickly the technology changes. Um, and we're clearly seeing these tech guys, um, like I say, the Googles, the Apples, the Spotify's of the world, um, battling it out for attention. So who knows? But how many podcasts do you think there are out there at the moment, everybody? Who I'd love to know your thoughts. How many people... Um, Jem says, this is probably a really stupid question, but would you record it on GarageBand as a, as a voice file? It's free. It's on your laptop. You certainly uh, can. Um, I use something called Adobe Ad Audition, one of the Adobe suite of products. Anthony say he always uses GarageBand. Um, yeah, I, I just personally uh, prefer Adobe Audition, which I pay £20 a month for. That's all. Um, and that's what I use myself. But yeah, how many podcasts are there in the world, everybody? Who knows the answer to that question? Like to know your thoughts. Post up, let me know. Hundreds of thousands now. How do you make sure you stand out? Yep. Great question. And lots of ways you can you can you can do that. But anyone else want to take a take a guess at how many podcasts there are in the world? Everyone's being very shy. Chris, uh, 20 million. So your slide, oh, that's active blogs. How many podcasts are there? Do you think, how many podcasts are there? Uh, Danielle, a lot, yeah. Uh, I don't think so. 30 million, 150 million, 1 million active podcasts. <laughs> so now you've been paying attention to, uh, to my content elsewhere, clearly. Um, a million podcasts, a million podcasts now 
Um, so April the 20th this year, 2020, Apple announced that we had had the one millionth podcast registered uh, and released. Um, and that's just how many podcasts that are out there, not active. For me, it's a drop in the ocean. It's a grain of sand on a beach compared to how many active blogs there are or how many uh, YouTube channels there are out there. It's a very small figure. But look how quickly it's increased. 24% increase from 2018 to 2019. 50% increase from January 2019 to April 2020. So January 2019, there were 500,000 podcasts. And in the last 16 months, that's gone up to a million. And now in the UK, eight and a half million people listen to podcasts each week, equal to, uh, well, it's more than that. I've just changed this, actually. Uh, one in eight of the total population. I think it's about one in seven now um, of the population listen to podcasts. <laughs> yeah, that chat. Yeah, you're right, Alan. There were there was uh, there was 850,000 podcasts in January this year, and then that's gone up by 150,000 in the first four months of the year, up to a million now. Um, yeah, you got your 500. Uh, so really, really interesting the uh, fact that you know it, it's been talked about in the industry for a while. You know, when are we going to hit a million, and when are we going to hit um, a billion? Uh, as, a, as, a, as an industry, a billion dollar industry. Um, to 75% of advertisers surveyed plan to increase their podcast ad spend. So that tells you, and that's one of the ways you can monetize a podcast is through sponsorship from advertisers. And that shows you that the vast majority of people advertising on podcasts um, are satisfied. They, they clearly think they're getting a return on their investment or they wouldn't want to um, increase their ad spend. So I really like this quote. A podcast is a brand's ownable, scalable, intimate stage outside of the Facebook powerhouse. With podcasting, the audience doesn't exist in one place in the hands of just one private company. The podcast can live across multiple platforms all at the same time. What do I mean by this? So you own your podcast. Okay. If you built an audience on Facebook or Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, um, all it takes is a change in, in the algorithm or a decision, which we've seen more and more of by these companies to actually uh, mute people, uh, to flag their content as, as unacceptable, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a lot of that. Um, over the last couple of months. So the podcast, you own the content, you're just hosting it on a platform, same as you would for a website. And then you're distributing that content across multiple platforms, which makes it scalable. Like I say, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google, Apple, Spotify. There's a whole bunch of others as well. And it's intimate. People form an intimate relationship with you. Um, when you are uh, the host, you know, people are listening to your show, vast majority of people um, via their phone through a set of headphones or earphones. And it's just your voice in their head. That's a pretty intimate relationship. Um, and like I say, it doesn't exist in one place. It's multiple platforms all at the same time. It's your legacy. It's your library of content um, that you'll have for forevermore. The fact that it's just renting space and all these other platforms and then you promote it across all these different social media platforms. I've saw someone in my own space um, have their own Facebook group shut down, and that's where their audience live. They got kicked out of their own Facebook group. And I've seen that happen a number of times, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so for me, you want to distribute your audience on multiple platforms. You don't want to have them all sitting on one platform. Yes, you cheated, Alan. Naughty man. What are you like? Um, but yeah, Google Google the Apple one, Apple uh, April 2020, and that will give you the most up-to-date, although 
we've had another six weeks and I know we've had a whole bunch of people in my Facebook group launch podcast down there. That's mirrored across the world. Could be up to 1,100 already. Who knows? So, um, you know, do, if, do you think you're too, too old to start a podcast? Do you think um, that your time has passed, that the opportunity is not for you? Um, so here is somebody, a um, friend of mine now that um, I helped with, with their podcast, uh, Jonathan Bowman Perks, MBE, launched a podcast called Inspiring Leadership. Jonathan's 56. Um, he His podcast, he had a vlog with uh, not many subscribers. He didn't have um, an Instagram account. He didn't have a Facebook account. He had some followers on LinkedIn, um, but he wasn't getting any traction on his uh, on his vlog. So what we did is we repurposed the vlog, turned it into a podcast. He created extra audio content and turned them into longer episodes, which you could only listen to via the podcast. Um, Jonathan, there you go. Number nine in the UK chart for management is, is, the, is the category that you can find his podcast in. As you can see, it's a lot of uh, podcasts about leadership. Uh, Jonathan's business um, is consulting with CEOs of blue chip companies. So could he use his podcast to target potential clients and form a relationship with them by hosting them on his show? Build a relationship, find out uh, what they are struggling with and provide the solutions through his coaching program. Yes, he could. And since then, Jonathan's gone on and got top 20 ranked shows in multiple countries, uh, France, Italy, Switzerland, South Africa, off the top of my head that I know, Italy, uh, that he's had um, because I check the charts all the time and I screenshot them and send them to him. Um, and this is, you know, for me, the, the, the massive opportunity here, everybody uh, watching, is that, you know, we've got these things, uh, smartphones, where you really are your own media. You can do everything through this. We had somebody, uh, Ted Lawler from the If Only They Knew podcast, do a tutorial in, my, in, the, in the Facebook group. And he literally recorded his content on here. He edited it on here. He uploaded it on here to his hosting platform. He then distributed it to um, Google iTunes, uh, Spotify, etc. Did everything through his phone. I prefer to have a nice big screen, but I think that's a generational thing. Probably, if you're brought up with just one of these and used to doing multiple tasks on one of these, um, then you can do everything through that. Um, so you are your own media. You can literally record everything and publicize your podcast using just your phone. Uh, Equipment-wise, again, literally can use that. I've got a PDF that I put together, a couple of pages uh, that's free for anybody that wants it. Um, you just got to, I'll give my email address at the end. It's alex at screw it, just do it dot org. Um, you're welcome to have that. I just getting so many questions asked uh, on webinars and in the Facebook group. I thought I'll actually sit down and put it together. And it's got everything. It's got free options on there that you can download apps from your phone. Uh, that are free right through to um, I just invested in the kind of top of the range equipment that I could take with me physically when I go to meet people to interview. Um, and it's got great entry level um, options there as well for you to, to, to buy. And I've, I've put all the links in there, put explanations, photos uh, to make it really easy. So anybody, uh, does anybody want that, by the way, let me know, post up anybody who wants um that information I can see afterwards. Um, I, I get people asking every day, so it's um, easiest is to put it in a PDF and, and, and send it to you. So I'm happy happy to do that. Anybody who wants that, I'll um, whilst we're here, I will literally just put my um, email address, and if you put it there, I'll make sure that I, I ping that over to you. Um, boom misspelled it typical anybody who wants it drop me an email and i will ping it straight over to you um and like i say it's got three options in your smartphone um both android and iphone 
and it's got entry level and top of the range equipment. And again, look, podcasting, like I've said before, you can you can start with no money down using just your phone. Like I say, you are your own media or you can go and spend thousands. You know, I spent a small fortune the week before lockdown, used it once and it's been sat here gathering dust because it's mobile equipment. There you go. Um, hoping lockdown changes soon. As I say, I've put a screenshot of a phone there, but yeah, I've just shown you my, my own one. You can literally just use everything that's in your phone. So though a number of you asked that you wanted to expose your brand to a new audience. Um, and for me, this is one of the major reasons why you'd want to start a podcast. So if you are, um, you know, a brand, an entrepreneur with your own brand, if you are working for another company and you're looking at podcasting as, as a way uh, to, to, as part of your marketing, to amplify your message, to sell your products and services, then 100%, you know, you can expose your brand to a new audience. And for me, the, the trick to do this, for me, it's all about the, the launch strategy. Um, and it's, you know, launching with a splash, like I've given you an example there that with Jonathan Bowman perks that you, you, you launch a podcast, you, you land in the chart, um, you get visibility from day one, uh, beforehand, you can obviously, you know, do a launch strategy, making your existing audience aware that you've got a podcast coming out. Um, you can then launch a podcast, land with a bang, land in the charts, get some visibility. When people are looking, um, to, uh, new podcasts to listen to they can see yours in the charts um if you consistently do well for a period of time in there and apple gives you a window of like six weeks to start with to get in there like new and noteworthy section i should have put chesses up that i'd mentioned earlier the common ground podcast because we launched help her launch hers um about three maybe it's only two weeks ago now and she got uh I think it was 57 when she launched. So she's got visibility from day one in the site. Life sciences was the category. Um, you get extra visibility there. You can then, I mean, that's when the hard work starts, guys, is, is when you then market, continue to market your podcast. You know, there's the opportunity. You've got visibility. People can see it. People can listen to it. They can see your artwork. Um, and that is your opportunity to gain a brand new audience. Uh, example from the opposite side of the scale. Okay. So if you're looking to, to, to grab a brand new audience, then Scott here, Scott Stockdale, he launched entrepreneurs can party. Scott is in his early twenties, uh, literally 700 followers on, on Instagram. Um, 500 connections, I think on LinkedIn, no Facebook accounts, no email list to market to, Six days after launching, this happened. Uh, number 10 in the UK entrepreneurship chart with the likes of, you can see there, Holly Tucker um, from uh, Not on the High Street. You've got Diary of a CEO again by Stephen Barlett, still there at number four. Uh, Ed Milet, huge show in America, The Ed Milet Show, and Rachel Hollis's Rise podcast is always top 10 as well. Um, and he managed to do that, like I say, with no email list. No um, significant following on any social media platform. Um, Scott, another another student of mine, came through a course that we got, the podcast launch program, and literally followed all the instructions and more. Um, by doing that, you attract new listeners. You attract new listeners. If you can get visibility from day one, if you don't, then you're going to be marketing to your existing audience and you're going to do it the hard way. Um, and I did that, you know, before I knew what I now know, I did mine. I did it the hard way. Um, I didn't land in the charts cause I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and now I do know what I'm doing. Hence helped other, um, entrepreneurs and different brands land with a bang. So who, when they launch, who, would like to get their their podcast in the chart for example is that important to you is getting a new audience and getting new listeners important to you let me know post up in in the question box i'm interested it genuinely interested to know um is that something that um is important to you 
um or are you just doing it for a hobby that you just want your your family and friends to see for example um question that's come in while i'm talking is from daniella can you use anchor for other platforms such as apple yeah so anchor is basically the platform that hosts your po your podcast where it lives um when you upload an episode you press um distribute that will automatically in 0.1 of a second go to all of the places people can find and listen to your podcast such as apple such as spotify etc hope that answers that question daniel if it doesn't um ask me again um can you do this for an existing podcast now that's a great question anthony um really like that question and my answer is ab absolutely yes um you know for example I, I mentioned grenade before alan barrett's company meant to be the next billion dollar um business in the uk uh that's what i helped them with and that would that was just as a, as a, as a consult, uh, as a consultation consulting for them because they'd exit, they'd launched it and they'd had people, the likes of Alfie days as guests who've got like 16 million followers on, on YouTube. And they wondered why they, they couldn't even get into the top 200. Um, so I had a good look at, had a good look at their podcast, um, gave them a whole list of things that they could do to, to improve different strategies that they could use. And like I say, within seven days and these, these things don't need to take a lot of time guys um within within seven days um they were number 14 in in the uk chart consistently um i, I would implement a different different strategy that would take longer than, than seven days because it would mean uh for me i would do like a mini relaunch that you would release a bunch of content at the same time rather than just one episode but you know that example um it, you know it shows you um, it shows me that that um, that you can do that with an existing podcast. You don't need to be, you know, launched, not get visibility, and then think you're screwed. Because when I launched my podcast, I had two listeners in my first week. Clearly, mother and my wife, and all my two daughters. Who knows? Um, but I've since, you know, grown that to a podcast that's listened to in in 143 countries. Last time um, I checked. And that's by doing it the hard way. Um, that's not by doing it uh, with a with a proper launch strategy. Um, is there an ideal schedule for releasing podcasts? Um, again, Ali, it's a really great question. And um, just wary of the time here, I will come back and I will come back and, and answer that. Um, and again, if you're not already, jump into the Facebook group because I think I think that's a whole episode there and then on ideal schedule for releasing podcasts. Um, can you let us in on these launch strategies? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it is a whole nother, you know, I could talk about this stuff for hours and, and I've done uh, Facebook lives in, into the Podpreneur group just on launch strategy, on pre-launch strategy, um, post-launch strategy, um, 100%. And if, you know, I'll give you the links at the end just because people ask every time, you know, can you get get all of the information in one go? And that, that's why I, I I say I was forced to do a course. Um, I didn't want to do a course, but I'm now really glad that I did a course because I literally just put everything that I've learned into like a nine hour uh, app that you can you can listen to, you can access. So um, 100 percent. You, you, you can either, like I say, jump into the Facebook group for free or you can get everything in, in one lump uh, in one course. Um, and I'll, I'll give you the links in case you're interested, but I'm, I'm not here to, to sell anything like that. Um, Okay, so um, that's great. You know, great questions. Both of those really educated questions, guys. Can you do it to an existing podcast? Yes. Is there an ideal schedule? Just part of what I do when I work with different brands is we we do we research what when their competitors are launching, releasing their podcasts. You know, what day, what time, um, those kind of things factor in to 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 the launch schedule. And that, you know, there is a lot you can do. Uh, in that, but I wouldn't say there's ideal. There's just different options. There, there are a lot of right answers. Equally, there's a lot of wrong answers, uh, and there's classic mistakes that that people do make when launching a podcast. Like me, I've made them all. Uh, hence, why <laughs> I spent three years learning and putting it into a into 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 a course, and then um, equally sharing that information via my, my free Facebook group. So. Those of you who are looking to attract a new audience, interested to know, is Gen Z an audience that you're looking to attract, i.e. 18 to, what is it, 28, 29-year-old, something like that, Gen Z? 
because they are the most popular listening demographic. Um, post up, let me know. I'm just interested to know, again, is that the audience? Because it's something like, again, Alan's probably Googling this as we speak to post up, but um, the, the percentage of podcast listeners that are Gen Z or the percentage of Gen Z that listen to podcasts is something like 40 or 44%, and it would have gone up again since um, lockdown because globally it's gone up 10%. Um, but it's something like 40% of Gen Z listen to podcasts and they are the most popular demographic that listen to podcasts. So for me, if you are a brand that wants to have a conversation with Gen Z, that you want to sell your products and services to Gen Z, that you want your message to be heard by Gen Z, if you haven't got a podcast, then you're clearly marketing to only just over 50% of Gen Z. Um, and I had this conversation with one of the military organizations, which will, will remain nameless. Um, but they were marketing via broadsheet newspapers, uh, TV, radio. Um, and I said to them, well, you know, how many Gen Z watch TV, watch terrestrial TV and read traditional newspapers? They don't. They get their news from social media and they get their um, and they watch YouTube and Netflix. They don't watch terrestrial TV. So if you haven't got a podcast, you are not getting your message heard. Um, no, Gen Z, not of interest. Okay. Interested to know, always interested to know, um, is that an audience you are listening to? Kelly says, yes. It depends on your business, doesn't it? At the end of the day, if you've identi identified Gen Z, um, as an audience who are significantly going to, you want to buy your products and services, um, and is that the next generation, for example, I mentioned cars before, is that the next generation of car owners? Is that the next generation of homeowners? Uh, then you want to be marketing to them. And there's many industries we could, we could talk about in that regard, guys. So coming towards the end of the presentation now, I'm going to run over by a couple of minutes. So apologies if you've got to go. I spent too long talking at the beginning. I know um, it is a character fault of me. So just finishing off now, and I will stay on for another 15 minutes if you've got any questions to answer as well. Um, and it will point you to the direction, go back up to the top of the page for the links. And I'll finish on the links as well here. But for me, it's podcasting is a great opportunity to amplify your story to the story you already have to tell that story in multiple ways via podcasting is just going to amplify it because you can get your message heard, I can say, in any number of countries throughout the world and all sorts of different demographics that can listen to your podcast as well. You know, it gives you the opportunity to your existing audience to educate them about your products and services, to keep them updated um, about what you sell. And I've done a lot of podcasts, it's a very popular one um, for brands to release a new product and at the same time, uh, launch a podcast, launch a new website, those kinds of things. I've been working with quite a few big brands on on tying that in with a, with a product or new service launch um, as well. So that's something that um, you might want to think about. Because for me, if you gain a new audience via a podcast, you know, over time, by listening to your messaging, by listening to the stories that you tell, you are going to turn a proportion of them into customers of your brand because you know if they're going to follow your podcast, if they're going to uh, become a subscriber, then your message is going to get through over time. You want to turn them into big raving fans as the people who are existing, uh, who are currently paying for your products and services. Um, and and you know, common question I get asked here. I just want to chuck this one up here. As people are worried that they have to create new content when it comes to a podcast. And for me, you can use existing content. I alluded to it before. If you've got an existing vlog, if you've got an existing blog, if you write thought leadership pieces on, on, on LinkedIn, for example, if you put out social media posts, um, then you can turn that into existing content. If you're putting out Facebook Lives, uh, things like that, Instagram TV, Lives, etc., you can you can turn that into a podcast and for me you can turn uh, and i do a whole presentation on this one alone how to turn a weekly podcast into a month's worth of social media content so you've got your pillar content which could be a pod could be a blog uh sorry 
or it could be a vlog. So those are the three forms of communicating we've got at the moment, visual with a video, audio with a podcast, and the written word with a blog. Um, that's your pillar content, your macro content. And you could turn that into micro content. You can disseminate that into video clips, audio clips, audiograms. Um, uh, why am I doing that? I don't know. Um, pictures, images with quotes alongside them, thought leadership pieces. You can transcribe your podcast and host that as a blog on your podcast. You could film your podcast and host that as a uh, as a vlog or on your um, YouTube channel or on your Instagram TV. You could film it live like I've been doing in the Not Just Crew group that I mentioned before for Cabin Crew. We've been filming them live. We had nearly 3,000 people in the last 60 hours watch uh, our last episode. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can just repurpose existing content um, and use it ultimately to promote your business. Those of you who've got a business here, um, for me, it's a no-brainer that you would, would not want to promote your business through your podcast. And you could do that in really non-subtle ways. You don't have to have messages there at the beginning, the middle, and the end like a sponsor would. Um, but you can do, you know, and it can be subtle. It doesn't have to be go to www.widget.com to get 10% off your first offer. It doesn't need to be like that. You could just be hosting interesting people um, who are thought leaders in your space and you build up your own position as a thought leader in that space just by doing that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, again, um, I can't remember who put this up without scrolling back, but you know, not, not liking the sound of your own voice, wondering who is going to actually listen to your content. Um, look, if I can get two listeners in week one, and then have listeners in over 140 countries globally. Um, honestly, anybody can. I've, like I said, just done it the hard way and, and built my audience up over the last three years. Um, and, and the quickest way is just to get over yourself. Like I say, get out of your own way. Um, be heard. Make podcasting part of your marketing strategy. Everybody should be doing this. There's never been a better time. I hope I've managed to convince you all of that. We're nowhere near the top of the wave when it comes to podcasting. Um, if you're not marketing via audio, why not? If your audience is listening to podcasts, then they're listening to your competition and they're not listening to you telling your stories. So to close, and I'll leave the links getting questions here from people asking about um, products and services that, that I offer. So I'm going to mention my course. I'll post that up. Um, the easiest way is just to go to podpreneur.co.uk to find out more about um, how we can help you with uh, starting and launching your own podcast. The easiest way is to dive straight into the free Facebook group to get started. So audiogram, Alan says, yeah, so like a series of images – um, that you would piece together, that you could play the audio through and have the subtitles across that you would put as a post on social media. So you're engaging everybody's senses so they can see um, the images, they can hear your podcast, they can read the subtitles. Um, so yeah, I, you know, one of my team, graphic designer, makes those every week for my podcast. Um, this week we released Can of Water, Josh White, Can of Water, those cans of water that you see. That was this week's episode that you'd see in Tesco's, uh, everywhere from Tesco's to the Oscars, um, through to the government's chief medical advisor. Drink on his desk I saw in the government briefing was a can of water. Um, Shirley Elizabeth, thank you. Got a dash. You are more than welcome. Um, have you come across Descript automatic transcription from audio? I haven't, but I know there's a bunch of them that do it. Appreciate that one, Anthony. I'm actually going to check that one out after this as well because uh, I've yet to find a decent one. Um, Anthony Day, thanks. Alex, useful idea. See you on Facebook. Yeah, look forward to that. I'll be doing a live in there at 1.15 tomorrow answering all your questions. It's literally going to be, call it a triple A, ask Alex anything. I'll answer all the questions that you may have when it comes to podcasting um, on there. Ali as well. 
um, going to Facebook. Hope to hear more from me soon. You certainly will. And just to finish up, guys, don't be a statistic. Don't be the number seven. That is the number that people give up on when it comes to their podcast, when they see that they're not getting the traction that they want because they haven't um, launched and got visibility by landing it into the charts. What next? Start. So here you go. Free Join my Podpreneur Facebook group. Um, that is what it looks like. You'll know you come to the right place. If you just Google uh, Podpreneur in Facebook groups, you will find me there. You should recognize that image. Um, that's the course that a few of you privately messaged me about whilst I've been on here. Podcast launch program. How to create your number one, your own number one ranked podcast. It's literally everything from working out what to podcast about through to launching um, into the top 20 and then growing your podcast after that. Uh, that comes in its own dedicated app. You can literally carry it around on your phone in your back pocket and listen to it uh, whenever you want, uh, wherever you want, and, and uh, clearly on whatever device you want. Um, this is something that I'm launching next week, I think. Um, so it's my first mentorship coaching program. It's for those of you who are super serious about um, your podcast and you're looking to grow. So you're either just about to launch, you've just launched, or you've launched a while ago and you actually want to know, how do I build a community? How do I how do I get my message heard in 140 countries, for example? How can I build my own community um, of listeners? Uh, how can I monetize that audience uh, and Literally, I, I every month you'd be having a, a direct um, group mentoring live online session with with me, where I let you know what's working in my business, and that's not just from my own podcast, but all of my clients' podcasts. So all of those learnings um, I put into that, and also once a month be a live training. So, for example, one one month could be how to leverage YouTube uh, to grow your podcast. Uh, another month uh, could be you know growth strategies. Um, using partners to grow your podcast. So every month there's two live, um, one coaching uh, and one training um, in there. So you just need to go to podpreneur.co.uk forward slash learn. There's a, there's a whole host of other bonuses that, that come with that as well. Um, and just to finish up, guys, last couple of slides, last, last slide for you. So that's what we offer as an agency. So it's full service podcast agency, production, editing, um, design, strategy, promotion, uh, data analytics, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely anything and everything you know. If you're a brand uh, or an individual entrepreneur that's looking to raise their personal brand, working with a number of uh, launching a bunch of new podcasts with different influencers at the moment as well, who've been on different TV shows, um, well-known on different social media platforms, that kind of thing. Uh, and then big brands literally from, as you saw, the uh, military and business podcast through to Festival of Enterprise podcast and everything in between. Um, yeah, that's how you can connect with me. LinkedIn is the easiest way. Um, email, like I say, if you want a copy of my PDF, those of you watching this on the replay, if you want equipment PDF, alex at scroogestuit.org. And if you want to send me a WhatsApp message, that's my phone number. If you want to take a screenshot of that, that's literally got everything on it, uh, including my website, podpreneur.co.uk. Um, ah, thank you, Dale. Second one of these you've listened to, but still useful to pick up other elements being mentioned through questions being answered. Yeah, I've changed a little bit of the content, but most of it is the same. Next week, um, I'm going to be doing a thought leadership piece on one and how you can use podcasts to become a thought leader in your space. So I'm going to update it again then. Um, second one for Ali as well. Great, great revision. Thank you. Um, and that's often the best way, isn't it, guys? Um, you know what you don't pick up. Kelly, thank you as well. Um, any questions? I've got a few minutes here. Anybody else that I didn't answer your question, which I apologize for as I'm kind of whipping through the slides. I'm going to knock a few off because I keep running over. I'm a nightmare. Um, and I do answer questions during the podcast and during the uh, webinar. So maybe I'll leave them to the end, but I'd like to keep the engagement up. Um, there's a private question. Let's have a look. 
I've answered that. Yeah, uh, from Daniela. Can you use Anchor for other platforms such as Apple? Uh, yeah, we answered that one. Anchor um, is literally a hosting platform that hosts all your content. And Apple is just one of the channels that someone can then listen to your podcast on once you distribute it from Anchor. Um, what should you not do when creating a podcast? Wow, there's a question, Ali. That is a webinar in itself, isn't it, really? Because there are so many um, mistakes that people make, including myself. Uh, I'll tell you what one not to do is when you actually launch your podcast, um, when you actually launch your podcast, uh, don't do what I do. So when you, when, you, when, you, when you send your podcast to Apple, you will get an email saying, thank you. Um, thank you for registering your podcast with us, something like that. I then assumed that Apple would then send me another email going, your podcast is now live. But they didn't, so I forgot about it. And after about four weeks, I went to check. And my podcast had been live for like three and a half weeks, and I didn't know about it. And therein lies why I missed the opportunity to market the living daylights out of my podcast and land with a splash and get a chart position, um, get visibility, et cetera. Because you've got a six-week window, essentially, when you launch to get into Apple's new and noteworthy section. And that's the, the first kind of curated collection that you can get into. Um, so that's that. I mean, like, like I said, I can do a whole episode on mistakes, Ali, but that's the most obvious one. Also, I would say don't launch with one episode. And I will do, again, an, a whole webinar on that because that's the biggest mistake I've seen people making in my podprinter group. Like I say, we're 20... 20 odd podcasts launched and I know there's more coming next week because people have been DMing me. Um, don't launch with one episode, launch with more. And there's a whole theory strategy behind that, that I will talk about. Um, that's great for now. Thank you. Learning, learning on the one episode too. Indeed. Um, Alan, your zoom question, scroll up. Okay. I'll go and have a look. Um, at that it's music royalties. Music royalties. Can't scroll up. What's going on with my? How's my screen for it? Now it is. Okay. Let's have a look. Uh, thank you, Dale, again. Oh, it's painfully slow. Um, I'm waiting for my MacBook to come back being repaired. And I've got this PC in the meantime, um, which is a bit painful. Uh, God, it's slow. I'm trying to scroll up. Uh, if you repost it, <laughs> I can't. Uh, here you go. Okay, I've just seen it. Um, there it is. Can you describe how you would use Zoom to record and then get the audio to sound good afterwards, bearing in mind you can't polish a turd? Oh, um, oh, sorry, yeah, I saw the second part of your question with audio, Graham, but not the first part, Alan. Okay, so, um, so this is what my producer, James, tells me to do, and we now tell all of our clients that we work with to do to do the same. So this is ideal world, ideal scenario. Um, and then it's quarter past. So I will um, finish up and I'll leave that last slide up there, guys. Okay. So the ideal situation is you want to um, record on Zoom. Okay. So record the audio on Zoom. Click the button in the settings that says split tracks. So you're recording each audio line individually so your audio is being recorded separately to your guests audio then both of you to have headsets or earphones in plugged in um it just knocks out all the periphery um sounds that are picked up literally the little knocks from you know the coffee cups and all of that um have a mic so i've just got 50 pounds uh, snowball, it's called. Um, blue microphones, it's called a snowball ice, a bit like the Death Star. Um, it's probably why I liked it. I can literally hold it like that as well, broadcasting live. So, ideally, and this is like ideal scenario, you have a mic um, and your guest has a mic as well so you both got headsets you both got mics and you then record your audio separately so you use for example garage band or you use 
Adobe Audition that I use, and you record your audio separate to Zoom. Then what my producer does is he then matches up those tracks with the track on Zoom. So my individual audio that's been recorded on Zoom gets matched with my individual audio on Adobe Audition. My guests individually recorded audio on GarageBand or Adobe Audition then gets matched up with his on Zoom as well. And that's what my producer does. I don't want to get involved in any of that technical stuff. I just like focusing on what I love, which is connecting with uh, people I want to connect with. And, you know, I've, I've been so lucky. I've got the equivalent, I say, of a Harvard MBA through three years of my podcast, interviewing the likes of uh, a Ted Baker founder, Ray Kelvin, or a Richard Reed from Innocent, or an Alan Barrett from Grenade, or a Lord Billamore from Cobra Beer, a Holly Tucker from Not on the High Street. I could go on and on and on. But literally identifying the people who've inspired me and I get inspiration from, and then getting to either meet them in person or as has been the case in, in the last few months. Um, where did that come from? Um, this new computer. You know, connect with them via a Zoom um, and have that content forever then recorded with them. Uh, but yeah, for me, I literally just do that. That's all I do now. And I do do some social media posts. I, I will decide what I want to, to pull from each post, but I'll get my team to do that for me. Um, hence why I say I, I can get away with spending four hours a week um, on my podcast and my advice to everybody launching their podcast. And I get it to start with, you might need to bootstrap it if you're a solopreneur, but the sooner you can um, outsource and automate the tasks, literally from booking guests through to um, the editing, the production, the promotion, the better it will be for you. Um, and I think, you know, it is achievable for everybody. You just do it in stages, um, build up a team of freelancers, to do that for you uh, unless you're the kind of person who loves editing and production which people are of course so tim au revoir from the center of the world and thanks so much i guess i'm your oldest podcaster 74 on saturday i don't know if you are or you're not tim but i wish you a very happy birthday uh my best buddy has got his 46th on saturday as well so i will toast you both um Awesome. So help, hopefully that was helpful. And those of you who are watching this on the replay, those of you watching on Facebook Live, on Twitter Live, on YouTube Live at the moment, I hope that's helpful as well. Um, that is the ideal situation to record audio, according to my awesome producer, James. Um, super great, says, Alan, I do need to catch up with you sometime soon. The outsourcing is the way forward. I don't have the time to do it. Um, exactly. It is for me. Um, you've got to outsource it. Uh, thanks, Alex Stamba, for email. Have a great afternoon. Um, and last comment was music royalties is RE using beds. Okay, thank you. Okay, cool, guys. I've got to fly. I've got another webinar to host for somebody else at 2 p.m. today. So I'm going to grab some lunch, dive in. Uh, thank you all very much indeed for, for swinging by. Hope to see you in the Podpreneur group. Hope to connect with you on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thank you for watching.